Clark. And you know what's going to happen after that, don't you? Yes, we're joined. Coming out of Nashville, Chantal Ogden is here. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been asking for her. She is going to be joining us. But right now, let's do the ads. And then we'll come back right back into it. Galaxy. Galaxy. FM. You're you. I'm Jimmy G from Kirby Strange. And you're listening to Galaxy FM. Where rock and roll lives in the galaxy. FM. 107. Yeah, mate. That's a good idea. Yeah, mate. <laughs> right. Okay. So, I'll just go back and refresh. Sorry. My pleasure. So, Chantelle, what we do now is the ads are playing, and then we'll go straight into the song Ghosts in the Field. We'll come back and introduce you to our listening public, and I'll, I'll let you know right now, there is... 5,433,000 joining us for the interview. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I brushed my teeth and everything. <laughs> nice, nice. They will see that. They, they will tell the difference, I know. Um, so, you were brought up on a farm, Chantel, not a ranch. I was born on a farm, yes, in uh, central Utah. No wonder you and Barbara are going to get on like a house on fire. Barbara comes from a farm as well. She has her own farm, uh, which is rural, out the back oh, of where wonderful. we are. <laughs> uh, she, she, does, she does sheep. Okay, yeah, sheep are, sheep are a big commodity there, aren't they? Yes, they it's are. A big, it's a big... Uh, a big part of the agricultural ecosystem there. Yes, they are. Do, do you know much about New Zealand? I don't know much. I don't know much. Just what I've read online and seen in pictures, and I would love to come there someday. It's a beautiful country, I know. Well, we will talk about that because I think we've got something in the plans for you to be able to do something just like that. Believe me, uh, I, I would love to be able oh, to have right. you down oh. here. Um, now, you've uh, also been uh, on the radio with uh, over 800 uh, different uh, radio stations around America and also uh, throughout the, uh, the world. Uh, we're, we're currently streaming to places like uh, there's Lagos, Nigeria are involved right now, uh, all through the British Isles, right up from England all the way through to Wales and Scotland, Ireland are all joining us today. Australia, which is... Our cousins, they've got nothing to do with us. We love to give them a lot of stick, but we do respect them as well. So uh, it's not their, our fault that they're Australian. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, that's great. And uh, I see in here as well, um, we've also got, uh, which is really, really funky, actually. We haven't had them for a long time. As France is joining us today. So uh, that's really, really cool. Oh, good. That's great. Now, um, I'm actually just going through your bio because, uh, unfortunately, I've just come out of a meeting to, to race in here to be able to have a chat to you. Um, so I'm just learning a few different things about you. So uh, bear with me. If I make a, the occasional mistake, you're welcome to give me as much stick as possible. I love it. Oh, um, you're, you're fine. You're totally fine. I'm just, I'm just trying to fix it so it looks normal here. <laughs> Define normal. <laughs> if you live up here, mate, yeah, there's no such thing as normal. There's, like nothing, there's nothing glaring about the background, I guess is what I should say. No, that's fine. And in, in fact, Barbara appreciates that because she is filming it. So uh, anyway, let's uh, go to the desk and meet our, our listeners.
right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, 4 after 11 o'clock, 14 degrees downtown, cold, it is cold, in fact, it's raining outside, so if you are driving around, turn your lights on, be safe, be seen, drive to the conditions, the roads are slippery out there, Wednesday the 27th, and believe me, I'm joined by icon to the music, Chantal Ogden, and believe me, you're going to absolutely love this, I know by everybody's request, about how many people are absolutely in love with Chantel. So we're going to have a chat about her. Let's fill you in a little bit. Uh, her songs have received airplay on more than 800 country Americana radio stations around America and also internationally. She's gone to uh, top two in the charts in, in different places. So believe me, she is a lady that you have been following for some time here on Galaxy and also people around the world have been doing it as well. Chantel, it is an absolute pleasure to have you join us. Good evening. Hi there, DJ Grant. How are you? <laughs> I am absolutely uh, elated to meet you. I'm very, very humbled to be able to meet you. Uh, I've got to let you know, though, that we did have a little side bet going on in, in the back room uh, to see whether you would call me Grant or whether you would call me Grant. And uh, <laughs> you didn't let me down. Thank you. I think she's gone. <laughs> she's headed off. She's taken one look and said, no, nah, I don't want to be a part of this. Chantal, are you there? Good. Well, I'll tell you what. What we'll do... Here. You are here. <laughs> you can you are... hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can actually see you uh, as well. So uh, technology is doing its thing right now. Catching up, I think. Yeah. I've really got to ask you, uh, just before we get off on to uh, the interview thing, I, I love your necklace. What is that? Oh, my necklace? Yes. It's actually a piece of, um, it's a piece, it's a piece of old jewelry. I like to wear vintage jewelry, so it's actually an old pin that I made into a necklace. Oh, okay. No, absolutely stunning. And uh, believe me, uh, I really do think it complements uh, uh, your uh, ensemble today. <laughs> How's that of putting it? Thank you. Now, uh, I also see a guitar in the background, an amp over on one side. Uh, a typical, uh, <laughs> typical musician, there's always got to be a tool in the background, doesn't there? There you go. That, that's wonderful. It really, really is. Now, uh, before we go too far, i got to thank Steve Baker for putting us in touch with you. Absolutely love that man. He is a big fan of yours. I know he is. We've spoken at length. So uh, i got to thank Steve for uh, going that extra mile and being able to put us together. Now, uh, Chantel, uh, i, I just got to ask you, uh, what do you know about New Zealand? How much do you know about us here down under? Now, Sean, <laughs> I want to talk to you about Ghosts in the Field, because this is a very, very important track, uh, the one that we started off with this afternoon, or this morning here in New Zealand. Uh, tell me all about it. How did you come to the lyrics of that? So, I grew up on a third-generation dairy farm in central Utah, which is out kind of near California, and I... My great-grandfather started it, and then it was passed down to my grandfather, and then passed down to my father. And he still has part of the farm today. Uh, but over time, you know, businesses change, and we've sold off part of the land, and we've shifted kind of the business to, to move with the times. And we actually sold the dairy cows, and now we just have a few beef cattle. But my, my dad was kind of the one that was responsible for, for pulling apart and selling off parts and pieces of the business. 
And I asked him one day um, what it was like to kind of see those old buildings and the barn kind of torn down and, and to make room for what was coming. And he said there are a lot of ghosts down there. And I always remember that. And a couple years later, I was driving through the Midwest, which in, in the U.S. is very much kind of wheat fields and, and cornfields. And I was talking to a friend of mine who was, we were out actually going out on tour, and we came up, I, I said the story, and I said, it, it's just like there's ghosts out in the field. And so we wrote the song, Ghosts in the Field, together, and it's really about honoring your roots, no matter what those roots are, whether they're a family um, at a farm, or maybe you grew up in the city, or whatever those places are that you go back to kind of connect with who you are as a person. And that's really the essence of what the song is about, is returning to those roots that, that make you connected in the world. Well, i got to be honest with you, Chantal. A lot of people are connecting with your music. Uh, and going by the stats and uh, by the emails that we get for your uh, particular flavor of music, believe me, we get so many. Uh, and Ghosts in the Field uh, is one of our top rating requests for Chantal Ogden. Now, i, I got to let you know, though, at the same time, uh, uh, The Road That Drives Me is one of the uh, more popular songs that we get asked for. And I'm going to ask you about that very, very shortly. But uh, I did ask you at the top of this what you knew about New Zealand. The reason why I ask that, and I've got to be honest with you, is I feel that we would love to see you live here and on stages in New Zealand. And I think the audiences would eat it, eat, absolutely eat you up. How would you feel about coming to New Zealand for a tour? I'd definitely be open to that if I can make arrangements and, uh, and make the uh, afford to come because I know it's a... Uh... It's an expense to get that far, but I definitely am open to it and would love to meet people in person there as well. Well, i, I got to let you know, uh, keep in touch with Barbara here because uh, she is the manager of Aurora Entertainment. Uh, not only my PA and my best friend, my right hand, uh, but she does so much when it comes to bringing bands and doing all the logistics of getting bands here in New Zealand, up and down the country, all the bits and pieces that uh, you don't really want to know about. You just want to be able to go on stage and do your thing. Uh, well, Barbara is the key person for that. And uh, we have been talking uh, rather extensively about uh, how we can possibly approach you and get you here in New Zealand. Uh, we currently, uh, this weekend, uh, we have Everclear coming to New Zealand. We've been doing a bit of work with them and, and a number of other bands. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do a number of other bands. I know you've interviewed a lot of, of great people on the show, and I've been impressed with the d diversity that you bring to the station. It says a lot about your love and the love that people there have for music in general. So that's exciting, and I'll definitely stay in touch with Barbara. I'd love that. Very, very cool, because I feel that uh, you're going to be a huge success here in New Zealand. I, I really do. Now, at the same time, yes, we do do a lot of uh, uh, bands into the country. We're currently looking at uh, Scott Stapp from uh, Creed. He's going to be coming to New Zealand. Also, the Bellamy Brothers are coming. We're going to be doing those as well. So we would love to be able to bring you into the country and... Uh, now, I've got to ask you, though, Chantel, are you up for a bit of uh, experience? Uh, are you up for uh, something a little not so normal? As I said to you, uh, you should explain to me what normal is. We don't have it here in the station. I'm up for it. Okay, let me take you down this road. Uh, let's start off with uh, the local indigenous folks here of New Zealand, the Maori, uh, and currently it is uh, Te Reo Week, which is basically Maori Language Week, and we do try to uh, speak a little bit of Te Reo as much as possible here in New Zealand. Now, at the same time, we have some really crazy stuff that we do, like uh, crazy foods, for instance. Are you up for trying a hoo-hoo grub? Okay, uh, we, we, we eat some crazy stuff here in New Zealand, just for a bit of a laugh. Uh, the Maoris used to, uh, yeah, yeah, we have some wild foods, we really, really do. And we have a thing called a hoo-hoo grub. Have you ever heard of those? No, I haven't. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is going to be fun. 
<laughs> what is that? Yeah, this is going to be fun. Have you heard of a caterpillar? Yeah. Okay. This is an oversized caterpillar. It is white and it has a black head. Now what you do is you put the live body in your mouth and you bite off the head. Don't eat the head, it's yucky. But when you crunch down on it, it's like eating uh, creamy peanut butter. Really? Absolutely exciting. I'm intrigued. I won't lie. I'm intrigued. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You and I can sit down together and uh, enjoy some hoo-hoos, and then we'll take you down the bottom of the South Island, <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, uh, we'll throw you off a bridge. What do you reckon? Absolutely not, but I'm into it already. Come on, tell me. I'm excited. <laughs> Sounds good. What are they? Oh, they're, um, so they're made in Nashville, and it's, they're about this big, they're, you know, kind of about the size of a small cookie, and they're peanut butter, chocolate, nougat, and caramel. Nice. <laughs> They're very good. Yeah, believe me. Uh, you better bring. You better bring a truckload. <laughs> I will do that. I will do that for sure. That really sounds right up my alley. I absolutely love the thought of that. Uh, yeah, we do have a thing. I did say about throwing you off a bridge. We do have a thing here for New uh, in New Zealand called bungee jumping, and uh, it is a big tourist thing here in New Zealand, and uh, we like to get as many people involved. Uh, with bungee jumping as possible. It's a lot of fun. It really, really is. AJ Hackett is a good friend of ours here at Galaxy, so uh, I'm sure he will accommodate. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I jumped out of a plane one time to do skydiving, and that was plenty for me. <laughs> <laughs> the food I'm all out, I don't know about the bungee jumping. We'll have to see. Hold on, I'll just take a note of that. No parachuting. <laughs> Because uh, that, that is one thing that we do here in New Zealand quite a bit, as well as uh, a lot of skydiving here in New Zealand. Uh, we are in a, a little town right now in Kaurau in the Bay of Plenty of New Zealand, in the North Island. But we have a number of cities around us, only, only moments away. And uh, one of the closest ones is Rotorua, which is a tourist and a married tourist uh, city, where we do a lot of skydiving right there. So. Uh, I'll just make a note of, I have made a note of that, uh, Chantel, <laughs> don't, I, I write down, don't throw her out of a plane. <laughs> don't, yeah, please don't, please don't. <laughs> well, I, I, there is another kind of bungee jumping that we do here in New Zealand as well. At, at the casino in Auckland, which is our largest city, uh, they have one where you uh, go up right up to the top of the Sky Tower and, and attach you to a couple of cables and... Away you go. And believe me, it's a lot of fun going full speed, watching the ground coming up towards you, but then you slow down and stop. <laughs> so we're into extreme sports and things like that in New Zealand, huh? Oh, absolutely. We like the X Games like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> in fact, we want to take pride in inventing the X Games and reinventing it because uh, we love good sports here in New Zealand. Of course, uh, our, our national sport is rugby union. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. But we have the All Blacks, who are the champions of the world at, at, at this game. And believe me, uh, poor Australia has nowhere. Yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. In fact, uh, <laughs> didn't... Didn't have a show the last time we played them. In fact, I've got to be honest with you, Chantel. Uh, when we had the uh, international games for a rugby union, which was held in France, uh, Australia didn't do too well at all. And we here at Galaxy opened up an 0800 helpline for the Wallaby fans, with which was 0800 one nothing, one nothing, not a thing. <laughs> No, I didn't get a single phone call. I was highly disappointed. <laughs> but having said that, and I've got to be honest with you, Chantel, I was talking to an Australian not so long ago who uh, lived out in the outback, saw the kangaroos going past every day of his life, did not know that they can't go backwards. Oh, interesting. 
that big tail won't let them have a reverse gear. So uh, this guy, he had no clue, none at all. So uh, no wonder they didn't win the, the rugby union, right? But we have this love-hate relationship with us, uh, much like you Americans and the Canadians do with uh, ice hockey, I think it is. Uh, we, we love to hate each other as well. So I'm sure you'll understand exactly where, <laughs> what we're going on about. Now, you're coming out of Music City in Nashville. What's it like in Nashville? Because this is like uh, no other interview you're ever going to have. Uh, now, Chantal, the one thing I did really relate to you with is uh, uh, your personal interest. Now, dogs. You, you love dogs. Now, I, I'm a big dog fan myself. I have a couple of huge ones at home. Uh, so, uh, and believe me, they are very much members of the family. In fact, they sleep on my bed with me at night. Not that the wife likes that at all, but they do. Uh, and also, you love decorating, cooking, and traveling. But you've been uh, uh, traveling extensively as well. You've toured throughout to uh, the, Euro uh, the UK and Europe and Ireland and places like that. Tell us all about that. Is, uh, because you've done it before now so we're going to uh, talk about getting you down here down under in New Zealand and sharing you with Australia making an Australasian thing so that we can now call you not only a, a European tourist but also a global tourist we're going to get you globe trotting down here uh, at the same time I, I, gotta yes. ask, I, I gotta ask you and this is one of the questions that our fans have been asking very very much how do we get hold of you? Uh, are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? And do you respond? The answer is yes. I'm on all of those. And yes, I do respond. Um, I think it's very important to connect with people. And the easiest way to find me, if, if you want to listen to some music and, and see kind of the hub of who I am as an artist, is my website, which is, which is ChantelOgden.com, and that's spelled S-H-A-N-T-E-L-L, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N.com. And from there, you can listen to music, you can watch some videos, you can read 
read some things. You can see some special projects I've worked on. And then my social media handles, it's very easy. It's Shans Music, so S-H-A-N-S Music. My friends call me Shan. So Shans Music on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, just connect with me in any of those places and I'd love to meet people and hear from them and, and get to know them as well. well. That's a big thing for our listeners because believe me, they like to know that they can relate and send messages, goodwill messages uh, to the artists around the world and love to be able to get a response from those particular artists. So it's a huge thing for uh, artists to be able to get a hold of our fans and say, hey, thank you very, very much. Uh, at the same time, uh, how do we download your music? Are you on Spotify? Are you on iTunes and places like that? And I reiterate, folks, go to these places, buy the music. Don't be cheap. Go and buy the music. Uh, are you on those? I am. Yeah, it, it's on iTunes. It's, my music's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on Pandora. Um, you can even buy music directly from me on my website if you want to do it that way as well. There's a store on my website. Um, so there's plenty of ways to um, consume the music and to, and to take a listen to it. I'd love to, love to hear what you all think. That's um, probably the greatest thing to me about being able to do music is just to meet people and to, to know that um, – I think music is really about connecting people. The international language is music, and believe me, you're very, very good at it. Now, The Road That Drives Me, tell me all about that, because we do get so many requests with us. Tell me everything about it. The Road That Drives Me um, is a song really about just following your heart and following your dreams. And it's... there. You know, the, the chorus says, um, stars burn out in the bright lights of every town. I think the word's out, it's better to just break down. But hope is inside of me, and it's the fuel that drives me to the road that, that drives me. And it talks just about how it's really the hope you have inside, the faith you have inside in your own dreams, whatever those dreams might be. And those are the things that keep you going when it's hard. And, um, I certainly have seen some very talented people come and go from Nashville and really lose themselves in in the the journey that the music industry is. One of my one of my mentors in town told me when I moved to Nashville 12 years ago, he said, "You know, the dream only gets you so far." And my one of my big quotes on social media is um, dreams are free, hustle is sold separately. <laughs> and I really believe that I really believe in that, and, and um, so anyway, the, the road that drives me is really about hanging on to those dreams and not giving up. Very, very cool. So without further ado, Chantal, well, Shane's, <laughs> uh, let's do it. Here is the road that drives me right here at Galaxy 107 FM. Chantal Ogden. <laughs> Are you comfortable there, dear? Everything's good. Nice, nice. You don't need to get a drink? No, I'm okay. Nice. I've got coffee. Go for it, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got coffee. Need coffee. I actually um, am just recovering from uh, laryngitis, so uh, it's nice to be able to use my oh voice. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, I had, had yeah. a terrible couple of days to be quite honest so uh, it is so nice to be able to yeah. uh, do my job properly again um barbara's sitting there yeah. nodding away at me like crazy <laughs> uh, so you know um my vocal instructor here in nashville um and, and i have tried this in nashville we get a lot of allergies and allergens in the air because there's so much pollen and and I've done this when I've had a cold and when I've been suffering with, with allergies. But you take um, pineapple juice and mix it with like three-fourths water and one-fourth pineapple juice. 
and you drink that and and the enzymes in the pineapple juice really are soothing to your throat and I've actually done that and been able to sing in the studio on days that I didn't feel like it or days that my voice wasn't a hundred percent so anyway I try that all the time and then there's a tea that I drink called throat coat I don't know if you all have it there but it's um I'll bring you some when I come down so very cool because believe me I'm very interested but I, I am going to go out and get some pineapple juice now you've got me sold I really think yeah so. I, I really do just mix it yeah just like a three-fourths water it's like diluted pineapple juice but three-fourths water and, and one-fourth pineapple juice yeah it, it works I drink it on stage all the time and you know people think oh what she drink it it's kind of like a I don't know it just looks like kind of a light yellow whatever but it's it really is good for your voice it's very hydrating very good so do you th do you think if I snuck a vodka in there it wouldn't hurt you know, I don't know, but you can, you can give it a go. <laughs> it's just me. That's the way I am. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the desk. You're right here at Galaxy 107 FM talking, coming out of Music City, Nashville, Chantal Ogden, and believe me, folks, I know you've been looking forward to this. Now, uh, Chantal, your uh, influences are basically a who's who of country music, uh, like uh, Patty Larkin, for instance. What a name. Uh, how, did, how did you uh, get your influences? How did you find these people? yourself tell me about that experience what was it like receiving your award And peer voted. 
So it, it wasn't like, oh, my fans just said, we really like her music. And it wasn't like the industry just said, oh, we really like her music. Or my peers just said, we really like her music. It was, it was validating because it was something that um, came from, from all three of those groups. But at the end of the day, um, and I can actually show you this online, but I have this picture that sits on my piano. And it's a picture of a little girl that, that after I played a song that she loved, um, she just, she, she was probably about six years old, and she just couldn't contain herself. She loved this song, and she was singing along, and it was about kindness, and she just ran up and threw her arms around me. To me, those are the moments, right? Those are the things that matter to me as an artist, truly, and when I look out into the audience and I see someone tearing up or, or I have someone who comes up and says, wow, that song really meant something to me and thank you for saying that or thank you for sharing that or that experience reminds me of something I went through, that's what the real reward is for me. You know, the awards are wonderful and I'm grateful for them. At the end of the day, it's not what it's about, though. I, I get it. I really, really do. I understand exactly what you're saying. In fact, uh, Chantal, I'm an engineer by trade and uh, ha have been a radio announcer for a number of years. I've done it once or twice now. Uh, but I listen to music not as a fan would listen to it, but I listen to it as an engineer would listen to it. And I uh, wonder, for a start, uh, where are you recording these wonderful pieces of work? Because I can't fault them, I really can't. And who's your producer? So I've worked with um, several different studios in Nashville for different sounds that I was looking for and different producers as well. Um, the, the first studio album I did was at a place called Jay's Place. Um, I don't know if you are playing any of the songs from the Water Through Stone album, but that was probably about 12 years ago now. That was my first record in Nashville, and that was a great experience. Um, that's more of a, I would say, a singer-songwriter folk influence project. And then I recorded um, Stories Behind Songs, which has uh, Tell My John Wayne Comes Along and some of those songs, and I wanted to do a very acoustic-sounding record. So I worked with Dave Smith, who actually played, uh, played guitar with Lee Greenwood for years and years and years as his lead guitar player, and he produced and, and worked on that album with me and some fantastic musicians as well. And, for my Better It Goodbye and my Ghosts in the Field project, I actually teamed up with John Willis in his home studio, Willis Sounds. Um, we, we, you know, in Nashville, there's a lot of people that have home studios, and John actually plays on Keith Urban's records and all the major artists in town, but he has a home studio, and that's what a lot of the, the um, A-level session players do is they... They play on these big records, and then the rest of the time they're working on independent projects like mine, and um, John was fantastic to work with, and Judy Rodman's my vocal producer, and she really helps me get the most out of my voice in the studio. And um, the last project I did, which was uh, released actually just about a year ago, was The Road That Drives Me. And for that project, I actually went back to recording with a live band in the studio. I wanted to get that energy of the live feeling of it. And I worked with some incredible musicians and um, worked with uh, a couple different studios here in town. And I that project I actually ended up self-producing. So that was my first time kind of looking at it as a producer. And it was a good experience. You know, I think all of the albums have a reflection of where I was at as an artist at that point, and that doesn't mean that I don't love playing songs that are um, that are from those old records uh, or those older records. It just means that I kind of feel like evolving as an artist and as a songwriter and trying different things is part of my journey. Um, I was laughing because the other day I, I also write music for film and TV, and the other day I was I was working on a jazz Christmas song 
and it was great. I love jazz music, too. I don't play it a lot, but I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston, and I studied a lot of jazz music during that process, and it's fun to sit down and go, if I were to do a jazz version of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, what would it sound like? And um, I think that's the beauty of music is there's a lot of opportunity to play in the sandbox, so to speak, and um, that's fun. It, you know, it's something that it only gets old if you let it get old. There you go. And uh, I'm so pleased you mentioned uh, Keith, Urban, uh, Keith Urban. Uh You do realize he is a Kiwi as well. He is, and you know, I'm actually, funny enough, I was writing a song once in Whole Foods, and he and Nicole, Nicole Kidman were in there getting some ice cream, and I stepped right up to the counter and asked him what kind he thought was good, and ordered some, and that's something about Nashville that I'll never quite get used to. People are just people here, and that's one of the reasons a lot of the major stars, like and Nicole and movie stars and actresses and and all the all a lot of the music folks come here because people don't bother them here. You know, they don't, you know <laughs> they can actually enjoy a meal out or go get ice cream out, and they're just normal. They're just considered normal people. I can hear a song coming out of this. I really can. <laughs> this lyrics being written right now. You can hear it <laughs> now, Chantel. Uh, I'm so pleased you talked about uh, um, John Wayne uh, comes along, or well, my John Wayne comes along. I, I want to know all about it because this is one of the most requested songs, mainly, would you believe, by women. Uh, but I've got to admit, there's a lot of guys that ask for it as well. How did you come to this? Probably about, I guess it's been about six years ago, I was on a songwriting retreat and I went out to Colorado. Um, near Durango, which is up in the mountains in the summertime um, by this beautiful lake, and we rented a cabin, and there were like six songwriters, and we, we just got together and camped for a week in this cabin. And I have a, a friend named Donna DeSoto, who's also a songwriter, and she and I uh, were, were on a walk around this lake that's called, it's called Lake Dillon. And we were on a walk one morning, and Donna, um, well, I'm single. I was single then, and I'm still single. <laughs> but um, Donna was, <laughs> Donna was, um, you know, we were talking about just sort of the kind of men that we were raised with. Um, I grew up, of course, on a farm, like we talked about, and I was raised with very masculine, very manly men who were very... Um, you know, protective and kind and kind of embody that spirit of the Old West like John Wayne. And she was talking about her family and how, how the men in her family, although it was in a city, were kind of that same very responsible, care for your family, you know, protect everybody, that same kind of um, energy, I guess, as, as a man. And we were talking about how John Wayne kind of embodies that, that spirit of the West and that spirit of, of being a kind and good and, and masculine man. And so we, we, we just started talking about this idea of a woman waiting for her John Wayne to come along and how, um, and then the song just evolved from there. We just, we just kind of took it from there and worked on it together. And it's a song that a lot of single women seem to request. So you men out there, listen up. That's what we're all looking for, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, Chantel, uh, i got to be honest with you. I think you're going to be absolutely inundated by men here in New Zealand. We're all the same here. We <laughs> we, we love that. And uh, we... <laughs> that's the problem. We're all in New Zealand and I'm in Nashville. I'll ship a couple of container loads over for you. How's that? <laughs> You know, the thing I can't get, Chantel, is that you're single. I really don't get that. I really don't. You're an absolutely stunning lady. Lovely smile. Lovely everything. Personality through the gunnels. I, I, I don't get why you're single. Believe me, I really don't. Because I think any man in his right mind would snap you up within a heartbeat. Oh, 
Oh, that's very kind. Thank you very much for saying that. So, without further ado, before I get myself into trouble anymore, uh, and my wife's looking at me kind of strangely right now, uh, let's go with, until my John Wayne comes along, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. <laughs> Gosh, Chantel, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to uh, say something <laughs> wrong there, so please don't take me wrong. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. But, you know, it's at, all good. At, at the same time, sweetie, uh, I, I really find it hard to believe that you would be a single woman at, at this day and age because, believe me, you are so <laughs> talented that surely there's a man out there that would say, I'm oh. in love. We'll see. I'm out there. We'll see. You know, I think God got a plan for that. You know, I 